then once again, my dear students of the Khawarizma High School Barrakesh, my dear students across Morocco, dear followers, I hope that all is fine with you. So as you can see, uh, after actually starting this series of, if you want, videos talking about the program of the second year baccalaureate, the English subject, okay? Today we're going to continue with the last skill, with the last, if you want, lesson in unit six here, which is entitled Cultural Values. We're going to talk about writing, as you can see, a letter to a pen pal. So today we're going to talk about writing. I understand that many students are actually worried about writing. It is their nightmare. Everybody is actually afraid of making a good or giving a good writing in the national exam. But you don't have to worry about these things. Uh, you are not required to give, for example, a long essay, which is actually trying to discuss very, if you want, important things, very big things. No, you have to actually be as simple as you can. What is important for you here is to make a difference and to make a distinction between, let's say, the types of letters. So, as you know, when we talk about letters, we always actually uh, write either informal, or formal letters okay so we have informal or formal letters so we should make a distinction between these two types so when we talk about informal letters it simply means letters that you actually address to your friends okay if you have for example maybe a friend in another country in a foreign country and you actually exchange letters or between brackets emails with them then you can actually use some particular uh, language style. So the language style between uh, two friends is not the same as between a, uh, a person like you and your parents, for example, or your teacher or your superior, okay? So when we talk about informal letters, they may actually, uh, they tolerate using some very informal language, okay? Some very informal uh, words, very informal style as it is not, I mean, the case for the formal letters. So when we talk about the formal letter, it's a type of letters that, for example, an employee writes to his manager, or if you want, an employee writes to his administration. So he has to respect, if you want, the main forms of uh, sentences, the style of the language, the type and the, if you want, the, the jargon that he uses in his uh, letter. So he has to be somehow polite and to use formal expressions. So as you can see today, before talking about uh, a letter to a pen pal, we should insist and focus and concentrate more on something which is very important here and very essential. So please, when you are asked to write a letter, you should understand what do we mean by a letter and you should pay attention to one important thing, which is, uh, let's say, the layout of a letter. What do we mean by layout. The layout is simply the form of your letter. When we talk about the layout or the form, we should always remember that we have some very essential elements that you need to include in your letter. Let's have a look at this miniature of a letter. So as you can see here, we have certain things here and certain things here, and then we have a couple of lines, okay? I will explain what do I actually refer here and then we have uh, a, a few uh, if you want one or few lines here in the end then we have certain other expressions so through this letter here we will actually so this miniature if you want tries to give a small depiction of the informal and the formal letter so they have the same layout and the same form what is important to notice is that the language style and the expressions and phrases or if you want, the sentences and the vocabulary are completely different. The language that we use for an informal letter when we address one of our friends is completely different and completely unacceptable to use in a formal letter. Okay, so as you can see here, we have different what elements. So you should pay attention to these things. When you are asked, for example, to write a letter to a friend, or to a manager in your company, and I'm talking about the national exam, or if you want the continuous exam that you have in class, you should always pay attention to including these elements. What we have here is the address. So, you should include the address here. The address of who? The address of 
the receiver, of course, the person is going to receive the, uh, the letter. Here we have another expression which is very important, and that's called the salutation or the greeting. You greet the person, you salute the person, and the uh, standard expression that we have here is dear friend, or dear, if you know their name, dear Kamal, dear John, dear Maria, and so on and so forth. So this word is very popular in all letters. So if you don't know, for example, the person you, to whom you are actually addressing it, then you can write the title, for example, dear, uh, if you want, Mr. President of, and you add the, the name of the company. Or you can simply write certain expressions that actually can replace dear, dear, if you don't know the person, to whom it may concern. So we can actually write things like to whom it may concern. So I'm writing this letter to the person who is concerned about this. It could be an application. It could be, for example, a request. It could be an apology. It could be a thanking letter. It depends on the subject of your letter. So this is the salutation. Uh, the first line or lines that we have here are actually called the opening. The opening is just an equivalent of the introduction in the normal paragraph or in the normal essay. In the paragraph we call it an introductory sentence, but in an essay we call it a, an introduction. So we have the opening here and then we have the main part, the body of the letter. That's the body paragraph. This is where you include the main subject. Is it an apology? Is it, for example, a reply about certain questions and certain inquiries or worries? Is it a thank you, for example, uh, someone who has actually done a favor for you and you would like to thank them with this letter and so on and so forth. So it depends on what you want to actually write about. Here the last line is, if you want, the closure. It is called closure, which means the equivalent of a conclusion or concluding sentence in a paragraph. It's the equivalent of a conclusion or concluding sentence in a paragraph. And then we have another expression which is similar to the one here. It's also a salutation, but a salutation where you say goodbye, I actually finished my letter. It's called the farewell expression. So the farewell expression can be things like faithfully, sincerely, your friend, yours, and so on and so forth. And of course, in the end, we have the signature. So please do not sign or use your names, for example, in the national exam. When you write a letter in the national exam, you don't have to sign your paper, you have to pay attention to this. So you don't need to actually sign, or you can give just something like uh, you, you can improvise a particular signature and that's it. So, these are the main elements that you need to include in your letter. Okay? Either informal or formal. The difference between the two is that you should respect what? Respect the style of language, the language style, the jargon, or the words, the vocabulary that you use. So I hope that you have understood all these elements. So I'll give you just a few seconds to uh, uh, write down all these elements here and take, if you want, these notes in your notebook. And then we're going to continue talking about the writing that we have in our textbook. I will try to read it on you or read it for you, okay? So take a few seconds and then we continue, please. Here you are. <coughs> That's it? Good. So let's go to what we have in the textbook. So as you can see here, we have a letter to a temple. What do we mean by a temple? It is a friend of yours. 
But a front is different from the other fronts because here we have pen. What is a pen? It means the thing, the tool that you use to write. So a pen pole is a friend with whom you exchange letters or your correspondence front, okay? You actually exchange letters. So as you can see here in the textbook, we have a letter to a temple, as I have just mentioned, and we have a letter that Maria sent to, that Mary, sorry, that Mary sent to her Moroccan temple, whose name is Mehdi. I'm going to read it on you, so please try to follow with me in your textbook. So, number one, <coughs> read the following letter and find out Mary's worries and inquiries prior to visiting Morocco. So Mary is going to visit Morocco, but she is worried about the culture. She is going to ask Mehdi about some cultural aspects in the Moroccan culture. Dear Mehdi, my parents have finally given me their okay to spend a couple of weeks with you next summer. We'll certainly have so much fun together, won't we? But I am a bit panicky about this visit. She is panicky. She has some panic. She is worried about coming to Morocco because she is coming to a different culture. Okay, well, so, but I am a bit panicky about this visit. Morocco is miles away. It's a new world for me with customs and beliefs definitely different from, different from the ones we've got here in Britain. She wants to tell you that the culture in Britain is completely different from the Moroccan culture, and that's true. What I got through net search didn't in the least relieve my panic, and I still have a couple of questions in mind. Shall I stay in a hotel or will you put me up? So she is worried about accommodation. What are the common ways of greeting people in your country? She is worried about how do people greet each other? Do they shake hands or do they kiss or what exactly? What about table manners? Table manners are, if you want, the eating habits, the way we eat, table manners or eating habits. Do you use both hands when you are eating? So she is worried about how uh, she is going to actually eat with you. Uh, and clothes. Should I dress up or wear casual things? She is worried about clothes style, okay? So, is it accepted in your country, for example, or is it common in your country to actually wear casual things like a pair of jeans and a t-shirt, like shorts and so on and so forth? Or she has to actually wear some decent clothes. I feel my dream to visit Morocco will come true at last. Tell that I count on you to tell me about the things above that's it for now, keep in touch. So you should pay attention to the last, if you want, part in the, in the letter, and the, especially the last expression. I count on you to tell me about the things above. So Mary counts on Mehdi. So imagine that you are Mehdi, and you are going to give her some what? Some replies to her inquiries, to her questions. You're going to write a letter to her explaining all the things that what? That worry her or that worry uh, uh, her visit. So, uh, as you can see here, we have the first question is, shall I stay in a hotel or will you put me up? Put someone up. It means to what? To welcome someone in your home, giving him, giving her or giving them if you want. Uh, the food, the accommodation, and all the necessities for life. It means to welcome someone in your home. That's what we mean by putting someone up. And that's a phrase and verb as we have already seen. So, shall I stay in a hotel or will you put me up? So, I will try to help you, I mean, with the answers, and then you will need, please do it, you will need to practice, you will need to write your own writing, okay? So, I will try to, uh, to actually help you with the answers. So, do we actually, do we uh, accept the fact that, I mean, our visitors and our guests, for example, go to a hotel? So, in our culture, in Morocco, in order to show our hospitality, we should put P 
people or visitors or guests in our home, in our family home. So you, the first question here is uh, that you have to reassure her, okay? You have to, to actually uh, give her, let's say, some guarantees that she doesn't need to worry about accommodation. So as a sign of hospitality in my country, we will put you up in our family home. More than that, we also offer our guests and visitors the best room or the best place in the house and the best furniture so that's number one if you are worried Mary about where to stay you will stay in my family home and of course my family will show the cordial acts and the great hospitality that the Moroccans are actually famous for so as a sign of hospitality we will put you up in our family home more than that we also will we will also offer our guests the best room and the best furniture. The second sentence here seems a little bit awkward, so we will also offer you, not our guests, it's a sign, for example, of hospitality, offer you the best room and the best furniture, or with the best furniture. That's number one. Number two. What are the common ways of greeting people in your country? So the common ways, we have to want to explain to Mary that we have, I mean, two ways. It depends on what? On the person, whether they are a male or a female. So, I would say, for example, there are, I mean, very, if you want, popular ways, or there are popular ways of greeting people in my country but we actually insist or I insist but I insist on what on their gender, whether they are males or females. So, for males, for example, females. So, for males, we can actually, so Mary is visiting Morocco. If she wants to greet a male, like for example, your father, your brother. So, you can shake hands or you can greet from a distance and you can even mention some expressions that we use like salamu alaikum for example so you can mention certain expressions to marry to actually learn them before she actually comes to morocco so for Females, if Mary wants to greet, for example, a female, either you can shake hands, you can also kiss on cheeks. For females, they can actually what? Kiss on cheeks. You can also hug. You can hug, for example, uh, a female like you in Morocco. So these are some cultural aspects that need some kind of 
explanation and illustration. So please, I would like you to actually write down these notes as quick as possible because I don't have enough space here. The whiteboard is quite, I mean, uh, small, so please try to actually write down these things because I need to what? To clean the wood. So please, if you need this information, you only need to go back in the video and then you will actually find all the information that you actually need. So please take a look here and I'll give you some or a few seconds to copy the ideas down. So that's num number one and number two. So number three, what do we have? What about table manners? And do you use both hands when you are eating? You're going to answer her with our eating habits. So, uh, let me tell you about table manners. Well, in my country, we usually eat in a group, means that the, the family, the whole, I mean, the family, all the members of the family eat together around the same dish or the same plate. So we usually eat together from the same dish. Okay? We usually eat together from the same dish. We use only our right hand to eat and of course you have to talk about the hygienic if you want habits that we have we have to clean we have to mention the name of god the name of allah before we start eating and we insist on eating with our right hand yeah so we use we uh, we use only our right hand to eat you can explain it, we can use the second one to grab food if you want to actually slice it or to cut it, okay? That's number three. Number four, add clothes. This is very important when we talk about clothes, we have to actually explain things. So, uh, we or in the presence of, for example, uh, talents, uh, people, we actually uh, respect we to whom we actually uh, show some kind of respect and politeness we don't have to what to wear these casual clothes that's what you need to explain here so in the presence of old people or older people in the family casual clothes are not allowed, especially in some conservative families. So if we have, for example, some kind of a, an open family, a modern family, then these things can be actually allowed and they can be actually uh, avoided. They do not pay attention to these things. They just uh, actually tolerate wearing casual clothes just like their kids and their, I mean, young, uh, teens in the family. So in the presence of all the people in the family, casual clothes are not allowed and you should uh, furthermore uh, we should dress in some decent clothes to show some respect to to our, if you want, elderly people, to our elderly people that's it that's number four and you can add your own ideas if you have some uh, more ideas some 
if you want more details you would like to include then you can add them okay so these are the most important questions that mary is worried about so you need to include these things in your in your writing and as you can see please if you go to the bottom of the page in your textbook you will find let's say a sample okay you have a sample it's like a model that you can follow if you want to write let's say back to Mary if you want to write a reply to Mary I will try to read it and then I will tell you what you're going to do so we have for example hi that's page 90 go to page 90 please you will find the sample there so uh, hi Mary good news you're coming to Morocco Welcome to this multicultural and exotic country. Get ready for the adventure then. The panic you're feeling is quite normal since it's your first visit, but you needn't worry that much. I hope the following tips would help you. So what are the tips that we have here? The pieces of advice are these illustrations of these cultural aspects that we have in our country, Morocco. You're going to, to mention number one, number two, number three, and number four. Please, do not write numbers. No, you need to write some texts, some paragraphs, okay? For example, you can start like this. To start with, the worries that you have about, for example, where to stay, and you explain. Then, next, after, uh, maybe afterwards, finally, and so on and so forth. So you need to write paragraphs, not numbers like this. So the tips, I hope the following tips would help you. Number one, I will put you up. Number two, shake hands or kiss in the cheeks. It depends on the gender. Number three, we use our right hand and we eat from the same dish. Number four, wear, I mean, decent clothes, not casual ones. If your family is not conservative, then you can allow her to wear normal, casual clothes, it's normal. And in the end, you have to what? To actually uh, write your closure, telling her, I look forward, for example, uh, I can't wait to see you, I look forward, or I'm looking forward to meeting you uh, next summer, and then you finish your letter with, goodbye, best wishes, see you soon, and so on and so forth. That's it, so I hope that uh, actually I have explained this lesson of writing very well and I hope that this would actually be of some use to you. Please do not write long sentences, write very brief and simple sentences. Pay attention to your punctuation marks, please, they are very important. And of course you have to insert some linking words to join sentences. And please I insist on what? On the clarity of your handwriting, your handwriting should be clear. I insist also on your layout and form and organization. It should be clean, it should be clear, and I'm sure you will make it, guys. Thank you so much for following me on this video, and I promise that I will actually make another video talking about the next unit, which is unit number seven, and of course, we'll start with vocabulary. Please don't forget to follow me either on my Facebook page which are actually shown on the screen here my facebook page and my youtube channel you can go to my youtube channel here and watch all the videos thank you so much for your presence thank you so much for your patience and see you later on guys goodbye